Yo, it's your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, back at you with a new video. Today is Saturday, April 20th, 2024, with your boy Ryan and the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, smash that like button either now or on your way out. Donate to your boy if you can, cash app, dollar sign, O-R-I-O-N-N-W-S-F, or the YouTube Super Chat right here. Oh, baby, we got the Seattle Mariners versus the Colorado Rockies. First pitch will be here in about 10 minutes. Yesterday, uh, the game got rained out, so I apologize for no stream yesterday after we already had a day off. There wasn't really anything uh, going on besides the last Kraken matchup. So there's going to be a doubleheader on tomorrow, and I may or may not do both games. One starts at noon, and the second game starts at 5, kind of leaning towards maybe the one at 5. Uh, but we'll kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. But we got a game here tonight, and then we have a doubleheader tomorrow, first game at noon, second game at 5 to make up for the rained-out game yesterday. And they had some snow earlier this morning that they had to shovel out. So let's cue the music, get into the thumb, and then I'll get into the starting lineups. All right, baby. And if you, uh, you know, are in Denver, Colorado, how does the Rockies with that type of weather, with all kinds of rain and all kinds of snow, how does it not have a roof? You know, you would think that out of all places in America, that that would be one of the top places that would actually have a roof or a retractable roof. But, uh, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, I guess. All right, baby. And on the left, we got Julio Rodriguez. Will he get his first home run in 2024 tonight? I hope so. Try dance up. And on the right, the guy with the best beard in the major leagues, Charlie Blackman. And let's start off with the visiting Seattle Mariners. Leading off for the Mariners, playing shortstop, J.P. Crawford. Try dance up. Batting second, playing center field, no fly zone, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. Batting third, playing second base, the switch hitter, Jorge Polanco. Batting cleanup and batting fourth, right fielder, everyone's favorite, Miach, Mitch Hanega. Batting fifth, catching for Seattle, big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Batting sixth, playing first base, Ty France. Batting seventh, DHing for the Mariners, Mitch Garver. Batting eighth with his up and coming debut a few games ago. Let's see if we can get him back on track. The left fielder from AAA, Jonathan Classe. Let's go, Jonathan Trident's up. There definitely has been a little bit of a resurgence and a spark since we called him up a few games ago. Let's go, Jonathan. And batting ninth, playing third base, the highest batting average on the Seattle Mariners. Josh Rojas. And on the mound for the Mariners, Luis Castillo. And it hasn't been ideal. He's our number one pitcher. You know, out of the five in the starting rotation, he's got an 0-4 record with a 5.82 ERA. He can't go 0 for 5, can he? Uh, you know, he may not be the you know player he was when we first brought him in from Cincinnati, but 0-4, maybe 2-2. Two and two. But 0-4 is definitely surprising, and we need to get Louise back on track. We need you to be electric. Let's shoot for 8 to 10 Ks. Let's go, Louise. All right, let's get into the home, Colorado Rockies. And they are one of the bottom three teams in Major League Baseball, so we cannot afford to be losing games to the Colorado Rockies, even if it's on the road. All right, here we go. Leading off for the Colorado Rockies, the man with the best beard in the major leagues, DHing tonight, Charlie Blackman. Batting second for Colorado, shortstop Ezekiel Tova. Batting third and their third baseman, Ryan McMahon. 
Batting cleanup and batting fourth, catching for the Rockies, Elias Diaz. Batting fifth, playing first base for the Colorado Rockies, Elejores Montero. Batting sixth, playing left field for Colorado, Nolan Jones. Batting seventh, playing center field for the Rockies, Brenton Doyle. Batting eighth, playing right field tonight, Sean Bouchard. And batting ninth for the Rockies, second baseman, Alan Triejo. And on the mound for the Rockies, Dakota Hudson. Dakota Hudson with a 0-3 record with a 4.15 ERA. So it's the battle of the bats as far as the pitching is concerned. But you would think that Hudson, you know, is going to be able to get his first win at some point. Hopefully not tonight. And uh, hopefully they can both get off the schneid. But, hey, Luis Castillo is 0-4. And, and he's our number one pitcher. So we need to get him going sooner than later. Let's go, baby. I missed you guys. You know, we ended up, uh, you know, taking Thursday off because there was no Mariners game. And uh, the Kraken ended up winning their last game of the regular season, even though they missed the playoffs. Okay. And uh, I ended up watching that with Paisley. But I was kind of, you know, feeling like I don't really like taking days off. But I figured, oh, let's just take this day off. Then I was really assuming that we were going to get going yesterday. And then they end up canceling the game due to rain. And then they had rain and snow this morning. But thank God the weather has cleared up. We got a double header tomorrow. First game starts at noon. Second game starts at five. I may or may not do both. We'll do at least one. You know, uh, obviously George Kirby is pitching the early game, but that's at noon. And then at five o'clock, I'll have to take a look to see who's pitching on that particular start. Uh, but you know, we may or may not. I want to be able to spend some time with Paisley. But uh, you know, we may just do one matchup. We may do two. Let's take a look at the pitching staff if it shows yet. So tomorrow's matchup at 12:10 will be George Kirby versus Cal Quantrill. Uh, Cal Quantrill's 0-2 with a 5.57 ERA. George Kirby, our number two pitcher, 2-2 two two record with a 6.64 ERA. And then the second matchup in the doubleheader tomorrow, the last game on Sunday night, is going to be Emerson Hancock versus Peter Lambert. Peter Lambert's 2-0 with a 2.31 ERA. And then Emerson Hancock is our five-hole pitcher, um, and he's 1-2 with a 7.98 ERA. So... We'll figure it out. Uh, I'll definitely message you, Matt, and let you know if we're going to end up doing both or just one. But hopefully everyone is having a happy 420 if you're celebrating or not. And hopefully the Mariners can celebrate 420 with the rest of y'all with a victory here tonight. Matt in the building, what's good? Let's get to 100 in donos. Let's do it. You know, your boy's got a lot of bills to pay. And obviously, uh, you know, having uh, the day off in the last two days based off the rain out definitely hurt. So hopefully we can get back on track. Daniel in the building, what's good? And let him know if you got a Twitter account, do your boys solid and like and retweet the live stream if you could. That'll definitely help us get some more people in the room. Matt, I saw that you've already done that, so I appreciate that very, very much. Bird Gang in the building, what's good? I'm ready. And everyone, make sure you're taking care of your mental health on this 420 holiday. You know, addiction, depression, anxiety, you know, I've gone through it and it's tough, you know, and you want to make sure if you feel like you're going into the gutter, uh, you know, that if you recognize the triggers that you can climb your way out of it with whether that means that you need to exercise a little bit more, maybe cut back on the fast food, cut back on the drinking and the smoking and, uh, you know, maybe doing a little bit more positive things uh, on your outlook and just making minor adjustments. You can turn your life around. I'm a big, big uh, you know, believer of mental health. And uh, I feel that it's worked for me. You know, if you would have told me that, you know, after COVID, you know, I would go from 270 pounds to 189, 190, where I'm at right now, uh, in a matter of about a year, cutting back on alcohol, no alcohol, no beer, no booze, you know, cutting back on all that, no eating fast food, eating healthy, and then walking with my pup an hour and a half a day, seven days a week, you know, that'll do it. You know, I'm not going to the gym. I'm not lifting weights. You know, I'm not doing any other crazy stuff besides just walking with my pup. But uh, it does show you if you have discipline, you can turn your life around.
All right, baby, let's go. Leading off for the Mariners, J.B. Crawford. Batting second this inning, Julio Rodriguez. And batting third, second baseman, Jorge Polanco. And we want to make sure we're giving the Rockies the proper love. And on the mound for the Colorado High Rockies, Dakota Hudson. 0-3 record with a 4.15 ERA. He's still looking for his first win in 2024, like Luis Castillo. Let's go. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as YouTube. Let's go. We got baseball, man. And like I said, I was itching you know, to get this stream going yesterday after taking the previous day off. But I don't like taking days off, let alone taking two days off in a row. But yesterday was out of my control since we ended up having a rain out. Hudson with the first pitch outside. 1-0 count. Let's go, baby. Let's go, JP. 1-0 pitch to JP Crawford. Pitch is outside. 2-0 count. Good eye, JP. Let's go. Get your swagger back, my guy. We need you. Two zero pitch from Hudson. Right on the corner on the outside for a strike. 2-1 count. Two one pitch for Hudson. Pitches inside. Three one count. Good eye, JP. There we go. I mean, take a walk. You don't even have to swing. You know, whatever we got to do to be able to get on base, and hopefully we can end up uh, sweeping this team, one of the bottom three teams in Major League Baseball. JP, check swing off his own foot. Count is now three two. Reflect in the building. What's good? Try dance up. You know, and again, I could have ended up doing the last regular season of the uh, you know matchup of the Kraken, but I didn't really know what the turnout was going to be since it was an early matchup at 4 p.m. But Megan was watching it in Australia, so was I. And we ended up winning the last game of the regular season. Let's go Kraken. We'll see what happens next year. Hopefully they can make the playoffs. 3-2 pitch from Hudson. Right up the middle. JP, one away. And then I was really looking forward, you know, to after taking a day off, you know, and not doing that cracking matchup and just watching it with Paisley. But again, out of the Colorado Rockies living out there in that Denver area, you're going to have snow and rain more than anybody besides maybe in Oregon or Washington. Wouldn't it make sense? And I know the stadium is, you know, it's been there for quite some time, Coors Field. But wouldn't you think that when they were going to design Coors Field, that they would have had a roof or a retractable roof? Like that, I mean, it's like Seattle not having a roof or a retractable roof. It would be just stupid. You know, like how often are you going to end up having rain or snow? Pretty often. So not, I'm kind of confused by that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And we got baseball here today. 1-0 pitch to Julio. Popped up foul. Let's go, baby. Try dance up. Let's go, Julio. We need your first home run in 2024, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Pitch almost to Julio's face. Wow. 2 1 count. Everyone's wearing face warmers out there. Julio's wearing one. The fucking pitcher is wearing one. Two one pitch to Julio. Julio pops up. Back, back, back. Popped out. Two away. Hopefully that's a good sign for Julio, and maybe we can get a few doubles like he had the last game. Next up, second baseman, the switch hitter, Jorge Polanco. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as the people watching on YouTube. Love you, and I appreciate you. All right, no worries, no worries. I'll be grinding it out. And then I may or may not do both games tomorrow. 
I wish George Kirby was pitching the late game. Then it would be more of a reason for me to do that five o'clock game with Kirby pitching. But, you know, I may do both. But again, I got to make sure I'm taking time with Paisley as well. So we may do both games tomorrow on the doubleheader, or we may just do the five o'clock late matchup with Emerson Hancock. Oh, one pitch to Polanco outside, 1-1 one, one count. Top of the first, 0-0, zero, zero, two outs, 1-1 one, one pitch from Hudson. Big swing and a miss. 1-2 count to Polanco. Come on, baby. Five runs, 7-10 to ten hits. That's going to be the magic number for the Seattle Mariners. 1-2 pitch, pitches outside, good eyes, 2-2 two, two count. One eighty two average, three homers, eight ribbies, with an OPS of six forty three for Polanco in twenty twenty four. Two two pitch to Jorge, pitch is inside, count is full, three two count. Three two pitch, foul back, count still is full. The weather was decent this morning when me and Paisley went for a couple walks, but now we're in a transition now where we're going to have about rain for three to four hours. And then by the time this game is over, it'll clear up. But looking out the window right now, it's pretty gloomy sky out there. Uh, but hopefully the rain will pass and then uh, it'll be decent once the game is over so I can take Paisley for that last walk of the night. Top of the first, 0-0, zero, zero, Marinez and Rockies. 3-2 pitch from Hudson. Good eye, pitches outside, and he walked him. Let's go. Jorge Polanco to first. Next up for the Marinez, everybody's favorite, Miach, right fielder, Mitch Hanega. Let's go, Mitch. We need you, baby. We need you to bring that electricity. Let's go. And we're still waiting for Ty France and Julio Rodriguez's first home run of 2024. We may get that tonight. First pitch to Mitch Hanega is up and away. 1-0 count. Two ninety two average, three homers, 13 ribbies with an OPS of 847. 0.847 in 2024. 1-0 pitch. Big swing and a miss. 1-1 one, one count. Romarinez. I got the throwback Griffey jersey on today for some throwback vibes. Big swing and a miss. 1-2 count. Come on, Mitch. Top of the first, 0-0, zero, zero, two outs, 1-2 one, pitch to Mitch Hanniger, incoming as Hudson steps off the mound. Pitches outside, 2-2 two, two count with a runner on first. Come on, Hanniger. Let's get your batting average above 300, baby. Two two pitch. Pop behind him. Foul. Count still stays two two. Two pitch from Hudson, chop towards third, routine play, throw to first, got him. Let's go to the bottom of the first inning, we leave a runner stranded, 
Let's go, baby. It's your time, Louise. We need you to be able to pitch well. You're 0-4 with a 5.82 ERA. So, you know, if we can get five runs and seven to ten hits, you know, that might be enough, even if you pitch a little poorly. But I'm hoping that he can go the distance and at least go six innings. So that way we don't have to worry about who's coming in if he plays bad and he gets pulled within the first two. Let's go, Louise. You're the number one pitcher, and you're 0-4. I believe he's the only number one pitcher in Major League Baseball with this type of record, uh, with an 0-4 record with a 5.82 ERA. I think most number one pitchers have at least a win at this point in the season, so hopefully we can get it done. Leading off for the Colorado Rockies, DHing for Colorado, and leading off, Charlie Blackman. Best beard in the major leagues, baby. Batting second, playing shortstop, Ezekiel Tova. And batting third, Mr. Reliable, third baseman, Ryan McMahon. No relation to Vince, Stephanie, or Shane. Let's go, baby. Megan in the building, how are you? Yeah, great news. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we knew that uh, they were going to get picked up. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read everything, uh, you know, through all of the you know, verbiage and whatnot, but very excited. And, you know, you could, you could argue, you know, out of all the shows that have come out in 2024, you could argue Fallout is the best show, you know, out of all shows. And Shogun came out, Shogun's good, you know, and X-Men 97 is good, and there's a few others. But uh, you definitely can argue that... You know, that was the best show so far of 2024, and it may be the best show even as the months pass. There may not be anything that touches Fallout. And, you know, to be able to have a video game adaptation, you know, uh, carry over so well, um, it's awesome. And I can't wait for season two, season three, and beyond. Foul back, 0 2 count. Megan with a fiver. Appreciate you. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you're here. Stacks on stacks, racks on racks, a little cactus jack, bang, bang, five dollar holla. Yes, I will get you those photos here momentarily. Appreciate you. Candace in the building. How are you? Bottom of the first, zero, zero. And again, I was considering doing the last game of the Kraken in the regular season, but I didn't know what kind of turnout we were going to have on that since it was going to be a four o'clock Pacific start. So I just watched it at home with Paisley. Uh, Megan was watching too. We were conversating and uh, it went down to the wire, but the Kraken ended up getting the victory. I was supposed to stream yesterday after taking the day off on Thursday, uh, and then they had a rain out. So we were supposed to have a game yesterday, a game today, and a game tomorrow. And then obviously Monday, the Mariners are off. But since the rain and the snow came in, we have a game tonight, and then they're doing a doubleheader tomorrow to make up for yesterday. Castillo, pitch low, fouled off. One-two count from Charlie Blackman. Two-year wait. Wow. Well, it'll be worth it. And uh, thank you for the like and the retweet on the Twitter as well, Megan and Matt. Appreciate you. Blackman fouls that one off again. Appreciate the two of you very much. Helping out on that. Bottom of the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. Luis Castillo on the mound. Charlie Blackman in the box. Pitches outside. 2-2 two, two count. Two-two two pitch from Castillo. Got him. There we go, baby. There we go. Nice job, Louise. Mariner Moose comes out. First K of the day for the first batter. That's a good sign. Nice job, baby. Louise Castillo. Let's go. Next up for the Rockies, shortstop Ezekiel Tovar. Shout out to all the people watching on YouTube as well as Twitter slash X. Tovar popped up to right field. Hanniger, two away. Uh, I believe you did. Yeah, I'll go back and look through uh, my Instagram and I can do that as well. No problem. Thank you. 
Big swing and a miss for McMahon behind in the count 0-2. Besides Charlie Blackman, this is going to be the individual we're going to have to keep our eye on. Now, he's the one that typically is going to be up there with the hits and the homers and the RBIs. Besides Charlie Blackman, as Chris Bryant is injured, so unfortunate that he's not out there. And that would be a contributor for the Rockies that normally puts up some numbers. But he's on the 10-day IL, and his estimated return date would be around April 24th. O2 pitch. Fouled off. Count still stays 0 2. O2 pitch from Castillo. Got him. There we go. Nice job, Luis Castillo, with two strikeouts with his first three batters. Nice job, baby. Mariner Moose coming out early. I like it. He's pacing for 10 Ks, 10 to 12, and that's what we need, baby. At the low end, even if he can, you know, just go six innings, and if he can get close to eight, that, that'll be a win for us. Nice job, Louise. Let's see if I can get some photos queued in here for Megan. Fantastic show. I was thinking about maybe watching it over again. And I, I rarely do that unless I really love, you know, the show. And hell, if it's going to be two years before season two comes out, I'll probably end up watching it many, many times, just like you. You'll watch it more than me, but I'll probably end up watching it a few times before the new season comes out. Probably three or four times, even though you've already surpassed that uh, since it came out. Sweet collectible. Loving it. All right, I see you. Awesome. Very cool. Oh, Cal! Back, back, back! Come on! Let's go! Cal Raleigh off his first pitch at the first at bat solo home run. 1-0 Mariners. Let's go. That's good for the mental health, baby. Yes, sir. First pitch. Take it all the way out of there. Yes. Nice job, Cal Raleigh. My guy. I wasn't anticipating him getting a home run right there, but geez. As soon as I clicked off of Megan's pictures, there it is, and there it goes. Back, back, back. Gone. Hell yeah. There we go. Next up, first baseman, Ty France. Let's not, let's go, Cal. Try this up, baby. Let's go. All right, Ty, we're still waiting on you and Julio to get your first home run this season. Let's go. Good start. Pitches inside, 1-1 one, one count. And uh, the quote, uh, did you request that or did he put that on there? Is that something that you requested? Or is that something that he typically signs uh, when he does the autograph? I, I assume that you requested it, but there we go, Ty, right up the middle. Nice. Nice hit there by Ty France. And again, we just need to be able to accumulate hits back to back to back, you know, and be able to get on a little bit of a run for Uncle Mo and that momentum. Cal Raleigh right on the sweet spot. It wasn't a homer for Ty to go back to back, but he ended up getting a single right up the middle, and I'll take that. Next up for the Marinez, DHing 
Mitch Garver. And Mitch has been struggling big time. You know, you could say he might be the weakest link that the Mariners have, but he ended up going for his first home run a few days ago, you know, to get him off the schneid. So uh, hopefully he can continue that hot trend. Let's go, Mitch. Mitch is low and in the corner, 2-0 count. Oh, he did, cool. That's awesome. Awesome, I'm happy for you. You know, especially when it's like a collectible that, you know, you, you like the person and, you know, you wanna make sure that, uh, you know, you got the extra money that you can collect something unique and special and, you know, you're about that pop life and you know, what's better than a, a regular pop or a, or a chase pop or a, you know, a rare pop, uh, one that's autographed, right? Awesome. Top of the second, 1-0 Mariners, runner at first. And uh, hopefully Mitch can find a way to get to first base. I mean, he doesn't have to swing. He can just take a walk, maybe get hit by the pitch as long as he doesn't get injured. At this point, don't even swing. 3-0 pitch. There you go. Good job. Nice job, Mitch. Miach, there we go. Take a walk. Go to first base. Now we got runners at first and second. Next up. Left fielder, Jonathan Glasse, got called up from AAA, and uh, he has been a big spark for the Mariners. You know, Dominic Canzone got hurt, ran into the wall. He'll be out for a few games. So Jonathan Glasse got the call up from AAA, and uh, he might end up being that left fielder for the rest of the year. Let's go, Jonathan. Already a fan favorite. Throw to second, safe. Wow, that was close. Almost got Ty France sleeping there at second base. So they have uh, regular pops and then they have bubble, bubble head pops. Well, how, what are the variations of pops? Educate me. Are those the only two? Just like regular standard ones where the body doesn't move, the head doesn't move, it's stationary, like a solid figure. And then they have bobble head pops. Oh, one pitch. The Classe, pitch is low, 1-1 one, one count. Make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health the best way that you can. Anxiety, depression, addiction, these are all things that people go through it on the daily. And uh, you know, if you can just make minor adjustments to your daily routine, you can climb out of the hole a lot sooner, believe you me. 1-1 one, one pitch, pitch in the zone, a little high, but called strike on Classe. One, two count. He wasn't happy with that. Go, Jonathan. Stay focused, baby. Five dollars. Let's get to a hundo. 95 to go. Let him know. Pitches outside. Two, two count. And then customs, okay. Can you get a custom regular and a custom bobble? So you can do a custom anything, right? You know, it just depends on, you know, if people, you know, at least for custom starting lineups and custom McFarlane's on, on the pops, you can create your own. But on McFarlane's and starting lineups, people usually repaint them and then they make it, you know, a different jersey, you know, so that's a different type of custom. Obviously with the pops still, uh, you know, being circulated, you know, you can like, create your own and whatnot, so. Uh, do you, do you, uh, customs are not bobbles. Oh, okay. Do you think that they will ever make custom bobbles or no? Top of the second, 1-0 Mariners. Runners at first and second, 3-2 pitch from Hudson. Classe popped up. One away. Wide out to center. One out. Next up, third baseman, Josh Rojas. Let's go, Josh. Best batting average on the team so far, and he's in the nine hole. Hopefully they move him out of there, but it does give us a nice pop at the bottom of the lineup. He's batting 343, one homer, four ribbies, with an OPS of .896. Let's go.
Pitch is low. 1-0 count. Deadline deal. Dominic Canzone, Josh Rojas, and Ryan Bliss for Paul Seawald. Started the season on the IL with an oblique strain. They picked him up to try to get to the World Series, which they did, but they did not end up winning at all. Texas Rangers were deadly last season, and they're deadly this season as well. Top of the second, 1-0 Marinez with a Cal Raleigh homer just right over the fence. It wasn't by uh, very much, but we'll take it. Runners at first and second with one out. Rojas chopped it to the pitcher, throw to second base. Force out at second. Now we got runners on the corners with two outs. Ah, I got you. What do you personally like? Do you like the bobblehead ones more or less? Sounds like you like the custom ones the best, and then the regular, and then the bobble is last. Top of the second, 1-0, Marinez. Two outs, runners on the corners at first and third. Hudson on the mound, J.P. Crawford in the box. Let's go, J.P. One sixty nine average, two homers, five ribbies. Need to get that average up. Good eye, JP. Pitches outside, two zero count. Let's go, Bay Bay. Right, exactly. Kind of a, a a memory from the trip itself. Pitches inside, three zero count towards JP's knees. Don't be hitting him on the knees there, Hudson. We're not going to make sure. Uh, we make sure we give plenty of love on both sides. Nice photo there of Dakota. 0-3 record with a 4.15 ERA. So him and Luis Castillo are looking for their first victory in 2024. Not the greatest start for either one. Pitch right down the middle. When he needed a strike, he got one. 3-1 count. Come on, JP. Oh, something wrong with the Dakota Hudson's elbow. He might have to get pulled out of the game. I mean, he wasn't really doing very good to begin with anyways. What's going on? Something wrong with his sleeve? His arm? What's going on? Maybe just to get a breather so he doesn't give up a big three-run jack and then they get down 4-0. Maybe just needs a quick breather. Looks like he's got a sleeve underneath the sleeve, maybe just for protection of that elbow and that arm and shoulder. Top of the second, 1-0 Marinez with a Cal Raleigh home run. Two away, runners on the corners, 3-1 pitch to JP from Hudson. Wow, line drive to the second baseman, and we leave two stranded. At least Cal Raleigh homered. Let's go to the top. Let's go to the bottom of the second, 1-0 Seattle. Next up for the Rockies, catcher Elias Diaz. Batting second this inning, first baseman L.A. Hodes Montero. And batting third, left fielder, Nolan Jones.
Let's go, baby. Nice start for Cal Raleigh. I love that. Ichiro should be unanimous Hall of Fame selection. You better be. Better not be like King Griffey Jr. where you have like one hater from like the Yankees, you know, that just whatever reason, just, you know, just because it was a rivalry and whatnot. But there's certain players that should be unanimous, you know, guys like Derek Jeter, King Griffey Jr., but especially Ichiro. I mean, there's no one that could say anything bad about Ichiro on you know, the field or off. So can't wait uh, for him to be able to make the Hall of Fame first ballot and I imagine the Mariners will celebrate him uh, not only with the you know Mariners Hall of Fame but also the Hall of Fame in general and we'll probably end up doing a you know three game uh, celebratory type of celebration with bobbleheads and other things Diaz lined out to center one away Ichiro, CC Sabathia, Curtis Granderson, Felix Hernandez, Ian Kinsler, Dustin Pedroia, Hanley Ramirez, Troy Tulowitzki, and Ben Zobrist. So the biggest name out of all those is definitely Ichiro by a bunch. Next up, first baseman, Ele Juris Montero. Oh, no, Ichi will get in. Well, we, uh, it's not a matter if he gets in. He'll get in on his first opportunity. You know, he's one of the greatest to play of all time, and even non-Mariner fans would admit to that. Popped up, two away. But the thing is, is we want him to get in unanimously, you know, out of all the, you know, the writers and everyone that has a vote. And usually if you're a Hall of Fame player, you know, you're typically going to get you know, 90, 95, 97, 98, but the elite players, like the best of the best of the best, you know, you normally get in 98, 99, or 100. And, uh, you know, and you want to be able to get in unanimously uh, if you can, you know, to be able to show how great you really were. And uh, they ripped off Griffey just because you had a disgruntled Yankee, you know, uh, a voter that just, you know, wanted to be an asshole and not have it just be completely, you know, 100% unanimous. But uh, if I had to put money on it, each row will get unanimous. Popped up, three up and three down. See who's due up for the Seattle Mariners. 1-0 Seattle. Next up for the Mariners in the top of the third. 0 for 1 center fielder Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. Batting second. 0 for 0 with a base on ball. Second baseman Jorge Polanco. And batting third, 0 for 1, right fielder, Mitch Anager. Let's take a look at the stat line for Castillo and Hudson. So two innings pitch, zero hits, zero earned runs, zero walks, two Ks for Luis Castillo. So nice job so far. And then let's take a look at Hudson. Hudson, two innings pitch, two hits, one earned run with that home run from Cal. No, uh, two walks and no Ks. Let's go. Okay, no worries.
Top of the third, 1-0 Seattle. Chop towards third base. Yeah, there we go. Right past the third baseman and the shortstop. Nice job, J-Rod. There we go. Julio. Nice job, J-Rod. Next up, second baseman, the switch hitter, Jorge Polanco. Go, baby. Pitch is outside, 1-0 count. Two fifty-five average, fourteen homers, forty-eight rippies with an OPS of seven eighty-nine last season for Polanco. Polanco crushes it. Is it going to go foul? Nope. Stays in play. One away. Julio gets stranded there at first. Next up for the Mariners in the top of the third, right fielder Mitch Hanaga. Let's go, Miat. We need you, baby. Happy 420 to everyone that is celebrating, baby. Did you get a chance to watch any of the spring uh, matchups? Obviously, Oregon hasn't played theirs just yet, but have you got a chance to... Uh, I assume you've seen some highlights or seen some things on like Instagram or Twitter slash X and whatnot. But... And we're getting closer to the NFL draft, and we'll be able to see where Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix will land, which will be very exciting. Oh for one with a ground out, 288 average, three homers so far in 2024. Oh, you haven't got to watch any of them yet? I did end up watching the uh, Xfinity race for NASCAR. It's Talladega. And uh, the individual that started the race, oh, what a grab. That almost was going to be really bad for the Rockies. But normally when you watch a race on NASCAR or, or even the Xfinity series below NASCAR Cup, you usually don't see someone leading every single lap and actually winning the race. And that's what happened today. Um, and one really cool thing about the uh, Xfinity series, the show Malcolm in the Middle with uh, Freddie Munez, Munez uh, he's actually one of the, uh, the drivers there on the Xfinity. I know he's trying to you know, work his way up to be a cup driver, Frankie Munez, but... Um, Pretty cool to be able to see him try to achieve his dreams after TV, you know, for being uh, on that sitcom on Malcolm in the Middle and uh, you know, trying to work his way up to be able to be in the big boys with the NASCAR Cup. And he actually is pretty good, you know, on a majority of the race. He was in the top five for uh, a good chunk of the race and then it started to fade back. But, you know, almost every race that I watch him, you know, he's either in like top five, top 10 or top 12. So pretty cool. Top of the third, 1-0 Mariners. One out, 2-2 two, two count to Hanniger. Hanniger, big swing and a miss. Got him. Nice strike out there for Dakota Hudson. Next up for the Mariners, catcher, big dumper, Cal Raleigh, who homered at his last at-bat. Let's go, Cal. Cal, there we go. Go, Julio. Nice RBI by Cal Raleigh. There we go, baby. Two for two, Julio scores. There we go, baby. Nice job, Cal. Two, zero. Marinez, Raleigh single to right, and Julio Rodriguez scored. Let's go. There we go, baby. Hell yeah. There we go. That's what we need, baby. Next up, first baseman, Ty France. Let's go, Ty. Top of the third, 2-0 Seattle. 
Two outs, runner at first. 291 average, zero homers and four ribbies for Ty France in 2024. 0-1 pitch. Pitch is high and inside. 1-1 one, one count. And depending on what we end up getting, you know, on Donos, if we end up hitting the goal tonight, then I may end up doing both games tomorrow. If we don't hit the goal tonight, then we'll probably only end up doing the uh, late game. That way it'll be easier for you, Matt, since, uh, you know, the first game would be at 12, which would be 9 a.m. for you, which is pretty early. And then the second game would start at 5, which would be 2. So that'll kind of determine, you know, what we do if we end up getting someone that will bless us here tonight and help us get to the goal. Uh, and then we may do, you know, both tomorrow. If not, then we'll end up just doing the late matchup. So that way that uh, you can still end up getting your workout in and then we can just do the late game. One two pitch. Pitch is outside. Two two count. Arch Manning. Yeah. And it all depends on uh, you know what's televised as well. You know, I'm not sure what you have for cable or satellite at your house there in Hawaii. If you have cable or not. Two two pitch. Ty France right up the middle. Throw to first. Safe. Ty France fell down, reached on an infield single. Hopefully he's okay. Oh, Ty is down. He might've stepped on Montero's foot. I hope he's okay. Look at this super mo. Great attempt by Trejo. Montero had his foot, uh, you know, like, you know, obstructing the bag, though. I mean, he wouldn't have stepped on him if he didn't have his foot, like, halfway on the fucking bag. Hopefully, Ty is okay. You can't have your whole goddamn foot on the bag when the guy's running the first like that. Got to have your foot, like, on the corner of the bag, not on the fucking bag. Wow, and they called Ty out. Insult to injury. Unbelievable. Yeah, that might be a pity a pity call there since we're up 2-0. All right, let's go to the bottom of the third. All right, next up for the Rockies, center fielder, Brenton Doyle. Batting second this inning, right fielder, Sean Bouchard. And batting third, who made that amazing play at second base, Alan Trejo. Castillo. And we're giving him the run support that he needs to get to a victory here today, so far at least. Go, baby. Let's get your first win of 2024. Pitches outside, 1 1 count.
popped up for Brenton Doyle. Out of play, one, two count. Bottom of the third, 2-0, Marinez. One, two pitch. Got him, another K for Castillo, let's go. Strikeout number three for Luis. Yes, sir. Marina Moose coming out. Let's go, baby. Nice job. Next up for the Rockies, Sean Bouchard. Let's go. Bottom of the third, 2-0 Seattle, 2-0 pitch from Castillo, chop foul, Bouchard, 2-1 count. Fouled off into the catcher's mitt, 2-2 two -two count. Louise, get another K, punch him out. Let's go. Two two pitch. Pitch is high. Count is full. Three two count. No baby, be electric. So far so good. Three two pitch, just outside, and he walked him. Damn it. Bouchard to first. Next up, second baseman, Alan Trejo. Made that fantastic play to first to get Ty France out. 133 average, zero homer, zero ribbies in six games so far for the Colorado Rockies in 2024. Foul back, 0-1 count. One pitch, Castillo. Ooh, baby. Trejo, big swing and a miss. 0 2 count. Let him know. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter, slash X, as well as YouTube. Let's get those likes up too, as well. See if we can get to 10. And then once we get to 10, if we can try to get to 15. And if we get a little bit of spike in viewership, we'll try to go for 20. We've got a long ways to go. We need six more to get to 10. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. It'll help us with the algorithm. Very much so. Bottom of the third, 2-0. Marinez, one out, runner at first with Castillo's first walk. 1-2 pitch to Triejo. Let's go, Luis. Little blooper, double play, got one, go to first, got it, oh, safe at first, come on. Got the guy at second, two away. Next up for the Rockies, Charlie Blackman. Well, he, he dove for the bag. That's why he was he was safe at first. He dove head first, which you normally never see. They're desperate to get guys on base, so I get it. Blackman pops it up, goes into the crowd foul, 0-1 count.
0 for 1 with a strikeout in his first at bat. 250 average, one homer, seven ribbies with an OPS of 735 this season. 0 1 pitch from Castillo to Blackman. Popped up. Behind the catcher. Foul. That's a nice souvenir. 0 2 count. Charlie Blackman with the best beard in the major leagues by a lot. Let's go, baby. Castillo on pitch number 39. Pitches outside, one two count. Go, Louise. Chopper, throw to first, got him. There we go, we leave one stranded. Yes, sir, end of the third inning, 2-0 Mariners. Rockies with no hits so far, Mariners with four. We're off to a good start. All right, Dakota Hudson, three innings pitch, four hits, two earned runs, two walks, one K. He's at 60 pitches in. And let's take a little look at Luis to see where he's at. All right, Luis Castillo, three innings pitched, zero hits, zero earned runs, only one walk and three Ks. Nice job. So far, so good. Now let's go to the top of the fourth inning. Leading off for the Mariners, 0 for 1, left fielder, Jonathan Classe. Classe is in session. Let's go, Jonathan. Batting second, 0 for 1, third baseman, Josh Rojas. And batting third, 0 for 2, shortstop, J.P. Crawford. Let's go, J.P. Get that swagger back, my guy. Let's go. Pitch in the zone for a strike, 0 1 count. Next up for the Mariners, Mitch Garver. Let's go, Miach. Pitch is outside, 1 1 count. Let's go, baby. Top of the 4 2 0 Seattle. 1 1 pitch. Ooh, crushed the shit out of that one, but that goes foul. Go, Mietch. One two pitch from Hudson. Towards third base, foul. Count still stays one two. Come on, baby. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter, slash X, as well as YouTube. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. Appreciate y'all. One two pitch. Pitches outside from Hudson. Two two count. Let's go, Garve. Chopped it off himself. Count still stays two two. Wow, 
about current weather in Denver right now at the game. Uh, you know, for all the guys that are wearing masks and all the, uh, you know, long sleeves. It's 33 degrees there, and they just had snow earlier today, this morning. So, come on, Garb, take a walk. There we go. Good eyes, Garb. I take it, baby. Nice job. That's as good as getting a single, baby. Let's go. Next up, left fielder, Jonathan Classe. Classe is in session. Let's go. For the 4-2-0 Seattle. Pitches outside, 1-0 count. Hudson's getting, uh, I wanna say not close, but I mean, he's in the fourth and he's almost, was he at 69 pitches? So he may make it, depending on what happens here this inning or next inning. Classe, uh-oh, double play, got one. Damn it, double play. Nice defense there by Colorado. Trejo, I see you. Great defensive play by him again. Next up, third baseman, Josh Rojas. Go, Josh. Pitches outside, 1 0 count. Rojas, little blooper. There we go. Nice job, Josh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, plus it's 420, you know, on top of that, too. So for the people that are celebrating. Next up, shortstop, J.P. Crawford. A lot of people sunk into their couches right now. Or huddling up in the garage with a, a bunch of people. <laughs> Pitch on the corner for a strike, a one count. Oh wow, the snow is coming down. We're in the top of the fourth. And you have snowflakes coming down here in Denver. At Coors Field. 0 oh, 2 count. Wow, I don't think I've seen this before. Snowflakes coming down in a baseball game. Wow. Doesn't look like it's sticking or anything, so hopefully they'll be able to get through the whole game. O2 oh, pitch from Hudson. Pitch is low and inside. One, two count. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. It'll help us out on the algorithm. And again, we'll try to get to 10. And once we get to 10, 15. If we get to 15, then 20. There we go. Rojas to third, JP to first. Here we go. I do remember that. Next up, Julio Rodriguez. Go, J Rod. error on Montero. Snow starting to come down a little bit more here at the game. Thirty-three right now in Denver. Julio, yes. There's an RBI. Tridents up, baby. Three-zero, Mariners. Let's go. 
Yes, sir. Way to be electric, Julio. We're still waiting on that first home run, but I like it, baby. You're being productive. Nice job. J-Rod in the building. 3-0 Mariners. Yes, sir. Nice job. Next up for the Mariners, switch hitter, second baseman, Jorge Polanco. Let's go, baby. Top of the 4 3 0 Marinas. Two outs, runners on the corners on first and third. Pitches outside, 1 0 count. And hopefully, we can sweep the Rockies if we can end up getting the two games played tomorrow, depending on if there's going to be rain or snow. Still doesn't make any sense that Colorado, they're in Denver at Coors Field. They don't have a roof or a retractable roof. You would think that you know they would be the number one team to have one, but um, I guess depending on how many cancels you know that they end up getting, you know, in, in the you know up and coming years, you know, since it's already built, it's not like they can uh, end up putting a retractable roof on it at this point, but. A lot of money would have to be uh, involved in a project like that. Julio with the stolen bag. There we go. Second stolen base for Julio Rodriguez. J-Rod, he's on it today. Nice job, baby. Nice jump for Julio there. No throw to second. Make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health. It's very, very important. Addiction, depression, anxiety. We go through a lot of these battles on the daily. Make sure you're doing what you need to do to win the day. Pitches outside, and he walked him. Polanco to first. We got bases loaded, baby. Let's go. Next up, everyone's favorite, Miach. Right fielder, Mitch Anegar. Let's go. Is it grand salami time? at 81 pitches in. See if they end up pulling him here or if they uh, have him. I mean, they're already down 3-0. Again, with one nice swing, it could be 7-0. So. And uh, Colorado is one of the bottom four teams uh, in Major League Baseball out of the 30 teams that are in the league. So with a 4-15 and record and 2-4 and at home, you know, we have to make sure that we win two out of three, but preferably we sweep. You know, win this one tonight and win both games tomorrow in the doubleheader. So... Bases loaded for Mitch Haniger. Pitch is outside, 1 0 count. Go, Mitch. One zero pitch from Hudson. Big swing and a miss and a rip. 1 1 count. Try to get it to at least four or five zero. One swing can get a couple of ribbies here on this 420 holiday. One one pitch. Pitch is outside. Two one count. We got 35 people watching. Shout out to everybody watching on YouTube and Twitter. Much love. We need three more people to smash the like button and we'll be at 10, two more. So if you haven't smashed it just yet, please do. It'll help out with the algorithm and uh, you know, overall with all the analytics and statistics. Bases loaded, top of the four, three zero Mariners, two, two pitch. 
Haniger grounded out to third. And he's out. Damn it, we leave three stranded. That's tough. But we have a 3 0 lead, so we're okay. All right, let's go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Take a quick peek at Luis Castillo's number so far. All right, Castillo, three innings pitch, zero hits, zero earned runs, only one walk and three Ks. Nice job. And let's take a look at Hudson after that tough inning. And then with Dakota Hudson, four innings pitch, six hits, two earned runs, four walks, one K. And he's at 86 pitches in, so I'm not sure if we're going to see him uh, in the fifth inning or not. Probably not. I assume they'll make a pitching change. All right, due up for the Colorado Rockies in the bottom of the fourth. Shortstop, Ezekiel Toba. Batting second, third baseman, Ryan McMahon. And batting third, catcher, Elias Diaz. Man, that's a good question. Um, you know, I hope that we end up going for offensive line, you know, uh, O line, D line, linebackers, secondary. You know, those are always the positions that I'm going to be looking at. You know, right now at you know running back, uh, quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end, we're we're pretty solid there. You can always get better. You know, on the O line, if Jackson Powers drops and Tampa is there, I think they'll snag him. You know, because obviously they understand how important it is to be able to have a center. I'm not sure if he'll be available on Tampa's pick and where they're going to go. But offensive line is something that we need to beef up, just like any team in the NFL. And then you can always use a, a run stuffer, you know, to pair up with Vita Vea or a pass rusher on the DN side. Linebacker, you know, Devin White is gone, so we'll be looking for another. Levante might be playing in his last season as well, so we'll be looking there. Uh, and then obviously you can always upgrade the corners and the safeties, no matter who you have. So that's where I'm going to be looking. Not necessarily what the team will do, but that's what I would do if I was running the team. O-line, D-line, linebackers, and, and, and corners and safeties. That's the, the, you know, the primary need of Tampa if we want to continue winning the NFC South you know, over the Saints and the Falcons and the Panthers. Which isn't really saying much because anybody that comes out of the NFC South is kind of a pretender. You know, I might be a fan, but I'm not, you know... I'm not oblivious to what's going on in the NFC and the AFC. And so it's like, yeah, we can end up making the playoffs with 9, 10, 11 wins, 12 if we get lucky. But if you, you know, put up, you know, put us up against, you know, the Niners or, you know, the Lions or whoever, you know, chances are we're not going to be able to beat teams like that. But if it ends up being someone kind of equal to us, we'll have a shot. So for a team that kind of slumps in the playoffs like Dallas, you know, uh, we always are confident against them. So. But we'll have to wait and see. Bottom of the four, 3-0 Mariners. Castillo on the mound. 3-2 pitch, popped up. Almost out of play. Ezekiel Tova in the box. I'm not sure, uh, you know, to Tampa if, if, you know, center, guard, and tackle are important to them. But I, you know, you're going to need to beef up those guys. You can always improve the position for depth or try to find a guy that, you know, could be better than who you have currently. You know, but those, those are going to be the pieces that we're going to need. Outside linebacker, inside linebacker. I mean, you know, again, you know, Levante David's going to be there probably for one more year and retire. Devin White is gone, so you know, we're going to be we're going to be needing you know the the retooling on the defense. But if, man, if Jackson Powers somehow, some way drops, and even though there might be a D lineman there that they want more, man, it would be a dream come true if he ended up being on Tampa. 
Yeah, almost in every position is a team need for you guys, especially with it doesn't sound like, you know, Cortland Sutton isn't moving anytime soon. So, you know, it's going to be uh, probably pretty tough for the first few years, you know. But again, you just want to see improvement each year if you don't make the playoffs. You know, go for six wins and then, you know, seven and then eight, you know, ten, you know, and it's gradually, you know, get better. So. Bottom of the four, three zero Seattle. But outside linebacker, center, and guard are, are going to be, I think, the top, you know, uh, what we're going to be looking at. So if Jackson Powers is sitting there, grab him, you know. We might. We might, man. Got him. Nice K there by Luis Castillo. Because, I mean, based on that draft pick, you're probably not going to pick an outside linebacker. So it could probably be a center or guard. And I'm not sure if there's going to be a guard, you know, good enough, you know, on that draft pick. So, you know, and centers usually don't get picked very high. You might be able to get, uh, you know, the best center in the draft at pick 26. You know, so if that ends up being Jackson Power Johnson, he's the first center off the board, and I get him at 26. He turns into a Pro Bowler Hall of Famer, and he ends up being like a Penny Sewell. That is going to be, uh, you know, life-changing for us, you know, obviously on the line. And that'll make Baker's job a lot easier, as well as the running game with Rashad White, Mike Evans, uh, as well as Chris Godwin. So I'm actually kind of hoping that they do pick him. You know, if I had my choice, if he's sitting there that late, that would be my number one choice. Then we can find a linebacker and a guard later in the second and the third round and figure it out from there. But I don't think there's going to be anyone top tier, you know, like, are you going to be able to get the top guard, you know, uh, at 26? No. Are you going to get the top inside linebacker, or outside linebacker at 26? Probably not. You know, that they're going to go somewhere between 15 and 22 unless there's someone that's really, really good that might get picked in the top 10. But with all these quarterbacks, probably not. Right. So it's kind of playing into our hands that maybe as long as someone doesn't pick him first, that uh, that will be the pick that gets me the most excited. If we get Jackson Powers Johnson, that will be a dream come true. Montero. Nice. No fly zone. End of the fourth inning. Let's go to the top of the fifth. I don't think Seattle's going to pick him at 16. I think you guys are going to go a different direction. I think you guys have more needs, you know. Uh, and again, a, a center at 16, that's that's like... But but being as good as he is, it would be justified, I feel, you know, because I feel he is the best center in college football. But, you know, a lot of those guys in that war room, they may or may not agree, and they may have other guys higher on the board. But if he ends up going to Seattle, hey, I'll, I'll be rooting for him to be awesome for you guys. And, you know, you guys have picked, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily overall, but, you know, um, you guys have picked centers and, um, you know, Max Unger, you know, Oregon. So, you know, you obviously being uh, in the Pacific Northwest right there, they'll be looking at guys, you know, that are at Washington, at Oregon, at USC, and we'll see if it ends up happening. But for whatever reason, if you guys, uh, if you guys, you know, pass on him and everyone else passes on him and he's sitting there at 26, I would rather have him than an outside linebacker or a guard, you know, because again, if you're going to be the best in your position, and then you're going to slide all the way down to 20, 25, 30. You know, that, it's a steal, you know, especially if he turns into a pro bowler, uh, all pro Hall of Fame player. And uh, the center is the most important position on the line besides left tackle or right tackle, depending on what uh, hand your quarterback is. And I actually think, you know, to me, the center is the most important because if you have a good one, they can pull, they can read defenses, and it's like another additional coach that's out there besides the quarterback. So that could definitely help out Gino, definitely help out Baker. So uh, we'll see. But uh, I'm not sure if the Seahawks are going to go that route, but you never know.
because at 16, um, you know, probably getting an edge rusher would be uh, the most, you know, that would be the smartest thing for you guys, you know, because there's going to be some amazing talent, you know, as edge rushers, especially at pick 16, you know, so, you know, there's going to be a few guys around 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and a few of them might be DN. And so if you can get a pass rusher that can get you guys, you know, eight to 10 sack lunches, you know, uh, you know, and that kind of is the standard, you know, um, that could definitely help you guys out on that D line. So I figured there'd be more value for Seattle to go edge, you know, with the first pick in the first round at 16, we picked 10 picks behind you at 26. So. I, I hope you guys don't trade back because again, if you trade back, depending on what you're looking at, unless you you know they have a game plan, which I know they will. Um, now, and it also depends on what players slide. You know, with all these uh, quarterbacks being drafted early on, so if you're going to be getting four, five, six quarterbacks taken in the first two rounds, there's going to be a lot of guards, a lot of centers, a lot of tackles on the O line that'll be undervalued, and there might be some amazing pieces that slide that don't deserve to slide, but there's just going to be the wide receivers off the board, quarterbacks off the board, but obviously offensive line will make more of an impact uh, if you're a, a really, really good one. And then obviously on the D line, you know, D tackle, nose tackle, edge rusher, there's going to be some uh, amazing game changing talent there um, that's going to be in the first and second round as well as the third round. So. Top of the fifth, 3-0, Mariners. It all depends if you trade back what you get. You know, like what what are you what are you gonna get? You know, if you do trade back, like one extra pick, two extra picks. You know, if you trade back, and and if you do trade back, um, you know, it, it all depends on you know like what you're gonna get. You know, and if you're gonna hit on the draft. You know, it's it's all it's one thing to you know to trade back, but then if you got your mindset that oh I'm gonna pick this player with this extra additional pick, and then what happens if another team leapfrogs you? and then takes the player that you wanted after you trade back. You know, so obviously they're going to have many scenarios in that war room and they'll figure it out. But, you know, I, I feel that depending on what you get, that'll determine on if you keep the pick or if you end up trading back and accumulating, you know, like an additional second round or fourth rounder or whatever the value is. Because, you know, picking at 16, you know, that could end up being like a Pro Bowl, all pro type of player, you know, especially if it ends up being an edge rusher. And on top of that, if it's a guy that can give you 10 to 15 sacks at some point in that guy's career, you know, if you start off and you get a guy at 16 as an edge rusher and he gets you eight sacks as a rookie, that's damn good. And then if he ends up getting 10 the second year, 12, and he just progressively gets better, but as a guy that can get 10 sacks or more at the edge, that could be the difference, uh, you know, for Seattle based on what they do. Um, and, you know, being able to compete with the Rams and the Niners or overtaking those two teams and being the top team in the NFC West. So. Man, that, that that's a, a, a good, good question. You know, there's going to be a few teams that's going to be looking at Bowers. Obviously, the Colts need a tight end desperately. And, uh, you know, they need someone to pair up with uh, Richardson. So he has a check down guy. So that would be kind of a a spot that would make sense not necessarily that they'll do it but um you know he's so good that we'll see if he ends up being like a sam laporta or a kyle pitts it really depends on the team he goes to if they actually have a good head coach you know a good offensive coordinator who's the quarterback you know where he goes and what type of targets is he going to get each game is he going to be a piece of the offense or is he just going to be a guy that's be used as primarily as a blocker more you know which really wouldn't make any sense you know same thing with Kyle Pitt you know it all depends on where you go and the supporting cast that's around you so but there'll be definitely a few teams that'll be you know trying to grab Bowers for sure which is outside 3-2 count 
But again, all it takes is one or two trades, and then everyone's draft is fucked. Like everyone can do mock drafts and be like, oh, it's this is gonna happen or this is gonna happen. And until you have like that surprise team that trades up for a quarterback that no one thought would, and then uh, you know the trickle down effect. It's like a domino effect after that. So there we go. Nice job, Ty. Single to center, Raleigh to second. There we go. There we go. Nice job, Cal. Nice job, Ty. Next up, Mitch Garver. We're in the top of the fifth, they bet. You got too many needs in Denver to go tight end. Now, if you had a, a solid offensive line and your defense was taken care of already, then you could be like Bowers. But, you know, if you have problems on the O-line, problems at running back, problems on the defense, you know, going for Bowers wouldn't really be that smart. He, he could be a decent player, but again, if the offensive line is shitty, you, you might not be able to get him the ball enough, and then you don't even know who your quarterback is either. So, you know, it probably wouldn't make sense to go Bowers. It would make more sense to go quarterback like Bo Nix. You know, or a Michael Penix Jr. or that, you know, depending on who's there, you know, you probably would want to try to get a quarterback unless they have their mind on someone else. But got to have a quarterback first to be able to throw to Bowers, you know. Otherwise, if you don't, then that's going to be like a Kyle Pitts situation where he's talented and no one's giving him the ball because they can't. And uh, it's almost like a wasted pick unless the right quarterback shows up. And with Kirk Cousins finally in Atlanta, then he might be able to see Kyle Pitts' true uh, potential. Popped up, out of play. Odin Sun with a three here. Thank you so much, Odin. Every dollar counts. Thank you, Odin. Appreciate you, my guy. Stacks on stacks, racks on racks, a little cactus jack, bang, bang, three dollar holla. Appreciate you. All right, no problem, bro. Uh, like I said, we'll probably not do the, the noon game. Uh, we'll probably end up doing this the late game at five. So that'll be easier for you. You can get your workout done. Uh, and then I'll do, the, I'll watch the first game with George Kirby, but plan on us uh, streaming at 5 o'clock tomorrow, Pacific time, 2 o'clock your time in Hawaii. Class day, baby. RBI. Oh, it went past the right fielder. Go, go, go. Go, baby, go. Everyone score. Everyone score. Go, go. Go, baby, go! Slide! Safe! Oh, Klasse got thrown out at home. Damn! But we scored another one. 4-0, 5-0, 6-0 Mariners! Wow, that was crazy. Plasta tried to go for an inside the park home run and went past the right fielder and he <laughs> we had bases loaded. He tried to go all the way. That's wild that everyone would have scored on an inside the park home run, but he had bases loaded. I don't think I've ever seen that in baseball before. 6-0 Mariners, baby. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, I didn't expect that to happen. Appreciate you, Odin. We'll get some photos up for him. Classe is fast as shit, too. I want to see a replay to see if he actually was out or not. Here we go. Oh, he did block the plate. Damn. That would have been something that I've never seen before. Bases loaded and all of a sudden getting all the way around and having everyone score. Hell yeah. Next up, Josh Rojas. 
Count is full, three, two count. Top of the fifth, six, zero, Mariners. That was amazing. We're at 12, 88 to go. Even the sun is coming out here in Oregon for that one after three hours of rain. Let's go, baby. Hell yeah. Rojas with the walk. Next up, shortstop, J.P. Crawford. Let's go, J.P. J.P. chops it to the shortstop. Throw to first. Two away. Grounded out to second. Rojas to second. Next up, center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. Get your first home run of 2024. Try it ends up. Let's go. Should be a great time to do it. Pitch in the zone for a strike. Pitch is high, 2-1 count, top of the fifth, 6-0 Mariners, baby. Players with zero home runs this season, Julio, 32 last season, Spencer Torkelson at 31, he doesn't have one. Nick Castellanos has 29 last year, he doesn't have one. Bregman doesn't have one. And Glaber Torres doesn't have one yet either. So it's not just Julio, but Ty France doesn't have one either. Got to get these guys locked and loaded. Especially when we're, uh, this is our 20th game out of 162. Come on, Julio. Julio chops it down third base. Nice souvenir for a fan. Go, J Rod. Oh, baby. Yes. Another error, baby. 7-0 Mariners. Let's go. Nice RBI for Julio. Yeah, baby. 7-0 Mariners. Yes. Way to bring that electricity, baby. But again, the Rockies are one of the bottom four teams in Major League Baseball. So this is what we should be doing to them. Hell yeah, 7-0 Mariners. There we go, nice job, Julio. I'm not used to seeing them go cray-cray like this, and I love it, let's go. All my Mariner homies are hitting me up right now too. It's like, this is finally some Mariner baseball that we actually can be excited about. Next up, second baseman, Jorge Polanco. 0 for 1 with two walks, let's go, Jorge. Pitches in the zone, 0-1 count. Pitch into the dirt, 1-1 one, one count, top of the fifth, 7-0 Mariners, two outs with a runner at first. Let's go, Jorge. 
pitch on the corner in the zone for a strike. One, two count. Pitch is high, two two count. Two two pitch. Oh, wild pitch. Go to second, baby. There we go. Very sloppy out there for Colorado with that wild pitch. Julio to second. Job, Julio. Snow starting to come down again. Chopped the first, got him. The damage is done. 7 0 Seattle, baby. Go to the bottom of the fifth. Two up for the Rockies, 0 for 1. Left fielder, Nolan Jones. Batting second, 0 for 1 with a K. Center fielder, Brenton Doyle. And batting third, 0 for 0 with a base on ball. Right fielder, Sean Bouchard. Judah in the building, what's good? Bray Wyatt's for Odin, even if it's just a uh, drive-by dono and he is busy. Make sure I throw up something uh, that he loves and I love as well. Good old Bray Wyatt, rest in peace. Appreciate you, Odin. Fiend, baby. Nice. Who are the Bruins playing today? Got the snow coming down here in Colorado. 30, 33 degrees. Game got canceled yesterday due to rain, and we had snow in Colorado there in Denver at Coors Field this morning. And I was hoping that they weren't going to get canceled. And uh, it's, it's not sticking, but this is the second uh, snow that has dropped since this game has started. Uh, it's good to see you, man. O2 pitch. Pitch is outside. One, two count. Well, I'm glad that you're working and uh, staying busy. Hopefully, uh, work has been good to you. We've missed you, and uh, good to have you in the room. Got him. Nice K by Luis Castillo. Trying to get his first win in 2024, which it looks like he will. There we go. Nice job, Luis. Mariner Moose is out, baby. Nice job, my guy. I mean, you're, like I said, five runs, seven to ten hits. We're helping you out. 4.1 innings pitch, one hit, no earned runs, only one walk, six days. And you're getting run support as well. Seven runs and ten hits. I mean, we're doing everything that we can to get you off the schneid. There we go, baby. And this is probably one of the first times I've ever seen snow drop at a baseball game. But here we are.
Pitches inside, one, two count. Which is high and outside, 2-2 two, two count. Bruins and uh, the Maple Leafs, nice. Two two pitch popped up. Ty France is there. Two away. Try dance up. Next up for the Rockies, right fielder Sean Bouchard. Pretty cool seeing the snow come down. Uh, you know, you would think Coors Field would have a retractable roof or a roof there, but they don't. But it's kind of neat to be able to see the snow falling down while they're playing. I mean, it's one thing if it's sticking, then you can't, you know, continue the game. But it's just flakes coming down. It's uh, a sight to see. Popped up. Ty France has got it. Oh! The snowflakes got him. Unbelievable. Reached on an infield single on an easy routine play. Come on, Ty. Primo in the building. What's good? Try dance up. We're playing in the snow in Colorado. They got the game rained out yesterday, and this is exactly what you want as a Mariner fan. Let's go, baby. We don't have too many errors or mistakes that we made. That was one of the first ones, but Ty lost it in the flakes there. Trejo, throw to second, force out, got him. There we go, end of the fifth inning. Let's go to the top of the sixth, baby. Do up for the Mariners, 0 for 3 with a K. Right fielder, Mitch Hennega, everyone's favorite Mitch. Batting second, 2 for 2 with two runs, two RBIs, a solo dinger, and an RBI for a run. He's amazing. It's the big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Cal. And batting third, hopefully he can make up for losing that ball into the snow. First baseman, two for three with a run. First baseman, Ty France. Let's go. And make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health. Again, addiction, depression, anxiety are very tough things to deal with. A lot of us deal with those things on the daily. But make sure if you feel like you're going into the gutter, you can find a way to climb out and doing the right thing to get you back on the right path and on the right track. Big facts. Go M's, baby. Sun is starting to peak out here a little bit. You know, it was sunny earlier this morning. Then we had about three hours of rain. And now we're starting to see a little bit of sun peeking through the clouds. I love it. Let's go. Yeah, that, that's, 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 you know, going through one funeral, you know, based off friend or family member would be tough. I couldn't even imagine doing three in three days. Um, that's, that uh, prayers up to you and everyone else that was affected with that. Hope things were the, were the three people that passed, were they related to each other in any way? Or was it just three separate people in your life? Top of the six, seven zero Mariners. We got a snow game here at Coors Field. Might be one of the first times I've ever seen something like this, but I'm happy that the game didn't get canceled two days in a row. And uh, we'll have a doubleheader tomorrow, but I'll probably just do one game. We'll probably do the five o'clock game tomorrow. 
uh, and I'll just watch the uh, early game with Paisley while I watch NASCAR Cup Series at the same time for Talladega, baby. One of the best tracks in NASCAR overall. Oh, it's at your church? Oh, wow, that's tough. Well, prayers up for your mentals, and uh, hopefully you're doing okay. Popped up. Hanniger, back to the warning track. Oh, one away. I was hoping that Hanniger was going to go yard there. It's all right, Mitch, next time. Next up, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Cal. That's a little unusual uh, to have that many people pass that, you know, in that amount of time. You know, like, you know, normally it's like you'll have someone that passes and then you'll wait a while, hopefully, before someone else does. But to have like three people in three days, that's a little unusual. Cal with another hit. There we go. Three for three for Cal. Let's go. Lots of Xbox. Re we're watching Fallout. De yeah, Deadpool 1 and 2 are fantastic. Yes. That'll make things a little bit better. Nice job, Cal. Three for three today. Let's go. Next up, first baseman, Ty France. Let's see if he can get his first home run in 2024. Let's go, baby. Make up for that potential error that you had where you lost that baseball up in the air with the snowflakes. They didn't give you an error, but they could have. Go, Ty. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. That'll make things better. Top of the six, seven zero Seattle. Runner at first, one away. Ty France swings for the fences, goes foul, one one count. Go, Ty. One one pitch in the snow to tie, crushes it. It goes foul. Which one do you like better, Deadpool one or two, or do you love them both equally? One two pitch, pitch is high in the zone, two two count. Well, at least something good came out of it, out of the, you know, the three ladies that passed away, rest in peace. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ty. Little blooper. Oh, he caught it. Damn it. Two away. Try to get Cal back at first. Didn't get him. Next up, one for one with a run. Two base on balls. DH. Mitch Garver. And if we could only hit like this on the regular, JP's 0 for 4, and Polanco's 0 for 2, but Julio's 3 for 4, uh, Hanniger's 0 for 4 as well. So half the lineup is super hot, and the other half just can't do anything. So Polanco 0 for 2, Hanniger 0 for 4, JP 0 for 4, but Julio 3 for 4, right? Cal Raleigh 3 for 3, and Ty France 2 for 4, Garver now 1 for 3, Classe 1 for 3, and Rojas 1 for 2, so... If we can just get JP, Polanco, and Hanniger going, then we'll be money. Let's go to the bottom of the six for the Colorado Rockies. And they still got Louise out there. He's only 71 pitches in, so he'll he'll keep going. At least this will be my, you know, probably will be his last inning, you would assume, unless they have him keep going, you know, to try to complete the game or go as far as he can, depending on if they got him on a pitch count. 
Usually when you get to about 90 or 100. All right, leading off for the Rockies, 0 for 2 with a K, Charlie Blackman, best beard in Major League Baseball. What's in there? Food? Who knows? Batting second, 0 for 2 with a K, shortstop Ezekiel Tova. And batting third, 0 for 2 with two Ks, third baseman Ryan McMahon. No relation to Vince, Linda, Stephanie, or Shane. Yes, all the small children will be playing in that beard. It's a beard. I mean, I, that's why I put him on the thumb, you know, and he's the guy that typically uh, damages the Mariners, at least he did in years past. But I think the Rockies would have been uh, doing a little bit better if Chris Bryant, the former Cub, was in the lineup with him. Because when they're together, they usually do damage together, but Chris Bryant is injured. So, but no denying that beard. Every photo, I mean, and what's in there? Who knows? It's it's a luscious beard. Mountain man beard. He'd fit in here in Oregon very well. Usually you'll see him with a little bit, but I mean that that thing has been I don't think he's cut it in years. Like, you know, it's been like that for a long, long time. First pitch to Charlie Blackman. Big swing and a miss. 0-1 count. We're in the bottom of the six. 7-0 Seattle. Luis Castillo about to get his first win of 2024. Fucking A, finally. And uh, hopefully we can end up sweeping you know, uh, the Colorado Rockies. We got two games tomorrow to make up for the game that got rained out yesterday. And uh, that'll put us in a good position since we just sweep the Reds. And then we can get above 500 for our record because right now we're 9 and 10. We win this game, 10 and 10. We win two games tomorrow, 12 and 10. And then we're right there with the Texas Rangers trying to battle it out for first place in the American League West. 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And ground out there. Pitch is high out of the zone, 1 2 count. Oh, congratulations. How many kittens were born? Pitches outside. 2-2 two -two count. I mean, Paisley's my whole world, so. We spend so much time together. The attachment is, um, I've never felt love like that. Unconditional love before by a person or a pet before like this. Popped up. One away. It's a no-go for the beard. Sorry, Charlie. Next up, shortstop, Ezekiel Tova, 0 for 2 with a K. Snowflake still falling down here in Coors Field in Denver. Big swing and a miss, 0-1 count. And congratulations to both of you on your uh, new job opportunities. You know, and sometimes, you know, things kind of happen out of the blue. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you are prepared for it. And sometimes you get uh, unexpected good news. And uh, I'm happy for both of you. Both of you guys uh, seem pretty happy with your new roles, with the uh, jobs that you have. And I'm happy for you guys. 0-2 pitch from Castillo. Got him. Let's go. Yes, sir. Nice job, Louise. Mariner Moose comes out. Let's go, baby. Jump up, jump up, and get down. Let's go. Nice job, Louise. How many Ks is that for Louise Castillo? Seven. Nice. That might be a uh, season high. Throw to first. Got him. That was quick. I'll take that. Charlie Blackman, sit down. Ezekiel Tova, sit down. Ryan McMahon, who's usually pretty consistent for them, sit down. We'll take it. We'll take it, baby. Julio and the beard. Fear the beard, but not so much today. All right, Mariners do up here in the top of the seventh. Let's go, Mariners. 
We're making the playoffs this year. Might not be able to win the division because the Rangers are so fucking good. They might actually repeat and go back to back to the World Series. Not necessarily they're going to win it, but you know the Rangers are definitely one of the top teams in Major League Baseball. But uh, it's going to make us better uh, as a squad, having to live up, you know, to their legacy. So we're trying to catch up to them. Next up of the Seattle Mariners, one for three with two RBIs, left fielder Jonathan Classe. Classe is in session. Let's go. Jonathan. Batting second, third baseman, Josh Rojas. Let's go, baby. And batting third. Hopefully we can get you your first hit of the night. Shortstop, J.P. Profit. We need you to get your swagger back. Let's go. And everyone's been doing great here tonight, you know, for the Mariners. It's a complete team effort. Uh, JP, though, 0 for 4. Polanco, 0 for 2. Hanniger, 0 for 4. But everyone else in the lineup has got a minimum of one hit. Some of them have two, and two people have three. Julio's 3 for 4. Got his batting average up to 247. Nice, right? And then Cal Raleigh got his batting average at 250 by going 3 for 3 today. That's exactly what you want to see. But most importantly, Luis Castillo going into the game was 0 and 4 which is very surprising with a 5.82 ERA. He wasn't really getting a whole lot of help with runs and hits. And he finally is going to get his first win in 2024. And normally if you're the number one pitcher of a team, you know, you'll go maybe two and two, you know, maybe at the very worst one and three, but I've never seen a number one pitcher go 0 and four to start off a year. But uh, here we are, but at least he's able to get off the schneid. Let's go, baby. Yeah, we're, we're in a good group, especially when you sweep the Reds, and now we're potentially in a position to sweep the Rockies. So, it, you know, we started off with some tough teams to start off the year. You know, it was difficult. And, you know, hitting, uh, you know, and getting the RBIs and, and the home runs, you know, we weren't really connecting. And the pitching was bad on top of that. You know, it's like Luis Castillo was bad. George Kirby was hit or miss, just like Bryce Miller. Uh, Hancock was terrible as well. And the only good pitcher that we had really was Logan Gilbert. So it's hard to win games when you only have one pitcher out of five that you can count on. But now George Kirby is getting a little bit more reliable. Nice hit by Classe, baby. But as soon as Dominic Canzone got hurt a couple games ago and they called up Jonathan Classe, everything changed. Like the vibe changed, good energy changed. And uh, he's the only player in the minor league since 1961 to have 20 plus homers and 70, count them, 70 plus stolen bases in a season. And he did that last year in 2023. So uh, you know, when Dominic Canzone gets healthy, I'm not sure if he's going to get his job back. He might end up being the backup, you know, to Jonathan Classe. Classe is in session. You know, you want to have those guys, you know, get called up. And we're still waiting for Harry Ford. You know, that'll be a, a guy that'll be our catcher in a year or two. And then we can always move Cal Raleigh to DH. Uh, and they can flip-flop, you know, between catchers, you know, and pitchers, depending on who they're comfortable with. And that's the next big name that I'm waiting to come up because uh, – Harry Ford is supposed to be kind of like a Buster Posey. He's kind of a smaller catcher, not really one of those stout, bigger catchers like Cal Raleigh. He's a little bit undersized, but uh, you know he's got a good arm. He's good at defense, and he has home run power. So once we get Harry Ford to get the call up this year or next year, then it'll take us to a whole other level as well. So top of the seventh, seven zero Mariners runner at first, two one pitch, Rojas. Damn, double play. That was a hell of a play right there. Line drive, he caught it. Throw it to first. Class A couldn't get back in time. You don't see double plays like that that often. What a play by Ryan McMahon. All right, Mac, I see you. You might be struggling uh, at the plate, but that was a hell of a defensive play. Line drive, immediately throws it back to first, and then ends up getting Class A. Class A is in session. Not anymore. All right, come on, JP. Let's go one for five, huh? Let's not go 0 for five. You're too good for that. Let's go. Come on, baby. Come on, JP.
You see, reached on an error, but I want you to be able to get a hit. Come on, man. Pitch is high and inside. Come on, JP. One for five, baby. One for five. Got to get that batting average up. Good eye. Two, two count. Two, two pitch. Yes. Yeah, baby. There we go. You know, when a guy is struggling, I'm really root for those guys to get out of that hole. And, you know, you don't want to go 0 for 5. You know, as bad as 0 for 4 is, when you get that hit, you know, late in the game, and he might have an opportunity to get up again before the game is over. Nice job, JP. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Nice job. Next up. Julio Rodriguez, three for four today. One of his best games in 2024. Let's go. But we're still waiting on your first home run in 2024. Try to end up. Can you get it here? That would be amazing. Let's make it 9-0, baby. A run and two RBIs. Three singles for Julio so far. Very productive. You know, Julio was struggling as well. But he's starting to get out of the funk. Starting to see the pitches a little bit better. Which is outside on the corner. Not sure if that was a strike. I think I would have called that a ball, but hell, they're down 7 0. So 7 0, top of the seven, two outs, runner at first, JP Crawford, 0 2 pitch from Molina to Julio. Julio, right up the middle. Let's go, Julio. Four for five today. Let's go. JP goes to third. Try to answer up, baby. Let's go. Julio, four for five, baby. That's electric. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice job, Julio. Great to see you getting back to your normal self. You know, being a top 10 player in Major League Baseball. Let's go. Four for five. When I think of four for five, the first person I think of on the Seattle Mariners is Ichiro Suzuki. You know, there's not very many guys that can go four for five, five for five, five for six. You know, four for six. Ichiro would do it on the regular. You don't really see players doing it that often anymore. And uh, awesome to see Julio channeling his inner Ichiro Suzuki and having a fantastic game, the best of the season so far. Pitch is low and outside of the zone. 7-0 Mariners, top of the seventh, two outs. Runners at first and third, Julio and JP. Next up, Jorge Polanco, the switch hitter. Let's go, Jorge. Pitches outside, 2-1 count. Oh for 2 with two walks. Let's go, Jorge. Jorge chopped right up to the pitcher. Got him. We leave two stranded, but we do the damage, baby. 7-0 Mariners. 14 hits, a season high. Let's go. Three errors by the Rockies. I'll take that. Take that. Take that. They still have uh, Luis Castillo in there. I might as well. He's only had 80 pitches, too. Let's see what his stat line is. All right, Castillo, six innings pitch, two hits, no earned runs, one walk, seven Ks. Let him stay in. If he gets three Ks, he's at 10. Help. Have him pitch the whole game. Who cares? Nice job, Luis. Way to be electric today. Make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health. It's very, very important. Addiction, depression, anxiety. A lot of us go through these ups and downs on the daily. So just making those minor adjustments and knowing your triggers can definitely help you get back to being your normal self. In fact, I'm always going to be an advocate for mental health as well as dogs and cats and what they do to improve your mental health. 
Next up for the Rockies, here in the bottom of the seventh, catcher Elias Diaz. One for two. Batting second, unless they make a change, first baseman Ele Jores Montero. And batting third, left fielder Nolan Jones. Uh, I think the number one thing is we're playing shitty teams. Uh, well, the previous series against the Reds, the Reds weren't shitty. We got lucky. And then that started it when we swept them. They're actually a solid team this year. They had a better, better record than the Mariners. But the Colorado Rockies are one of the bottom three or four teams in Major League Baseball out of 30. So that is a, a, the big reason why we're doing so well, is that the pitching is good, the hitting is good. They're not a very good team, and we're taking advantage of them tonight. And so that's really the reason why. Now, if we were playing a better team, we probably wouldn't be up 7-0 right now. Hell, we might be down 7-0. So now sometime, you know, in the schedule, it, it favors you. You have a little bit of momentum. So we played the Cincinnati Reds. They're a solid, good team. We swept them, won all three games. Now we're here in Colorado. We're winning this game and we have a good chance to win the two games tomorrow if we play Mariner baseball. And if that's the case, then that can build more momentum. So it's a little bit of the Mariners, you know, you know, building confidence after sweeping the Reds. And then also that the Rockies are kind of a shitty team, just being honest. So, but even though you're a shitty team, that doesn't mean that you're going to automatically win. But again, when you have a 9-10 and 10 record, nice K by Castillo, and you're playing against a team that's 4-15, and 15, one of the bottom four teams in Major League Baseball, you have to sweep teams like this. You know, you expect to you know, win all three games against a team that's like this. So, now I'm a little surprised that we have seven, you know, but I'll take it, so... Nice. That's always good when you can get the controller. Yeah. And obviously, uh, when things like that happen, you know, it, you're never going to be the same. And you just have to try to adapt, you know, the best way that you can. And, you know, try to be as positive and, you know, make a choice to try to be happy rather than to be sad. And try not to let people or things that happen in your life trigger you. Um, and it's about controlling emotions, you know, the best way that you can. And a lot of times there's things out of our control. And if you, you know, get worked up about things that are out of your control, then when you have things that are in your control and things go bad, you know, you have to be able to try to do your best in those things. And that's easier said than done for each person. Some people can handle emotions better than others, um, you know, but again, you always have us here, you know, to fall back on for, you know, to improve your mental health. I, I love you and I appreciate you. You've been a big part, you know, of this channel. You're one of the backbones of this channel. And uh, you know, even though that is true, you're not going to be the same, uh, you know, but we do enjoy your presence on the channel, uh, regardless if you donate or not. But when you do, it really helps us out, obviously, uh, you know, with the bills and everything else that need to be paid. And you're continuing to let me do my dream full time. And uh, I can't repay you for that. Appreciate you. Two away. Montero grounded out to third. And I'm excited that you get your new controller. I know they're coming out with uh, NCAA football uh, custom controllers, too, for the teams like Oregon, USC, Michigan, Ohio State. So that way, when the college football game comes out, you can end up using your custom controller. And I've seen a couple uh, designs of the customs that are coming out, uh, either, you know, through them or, you know, just someone creating them. And uh, the designs that I've seen have been pretty cool. Bottom of the seventh, 7-0 seven Seattle. Castillo playing well. Eight Ks for Louise. Let's make it nine, baby. Nolan Jones fouls it off. Count remains one, two. Bottom of the seventh, seven, zero. Mariners, two outs, one, two count to Nolan Jones. And we haven't had too many games uh, that are like this. And, uh, you know, when you get your ass kicked over and over and over again, it's kind of nice to be able to have a blowout. You know, I don't expect this to happen all the time, but it is kind of nice after you get beat up, you know, in the first part of the season to be able to have a couple games like this to regain your confidence uh, in the team. Let's 
Go, Louise. Two two pitch to Nolan Jones. Get him. Got him. Nine K's. Let's go. Nine punch outs for Luis Castillo. And you know what that is, baby? That's electric, baby. Let me go. And uh, considering it's coming from a guy that's 0-4, you know, who's our number one pitcher, supposedly, even though I think he's probably our number four pitcher uh, this season. But uh, it's nice for him to be able to get his first win, and we'll see if he continues to keep playing. End of the seventh inning. I mean, you might as well, you know, have him keep going. See if he can end up getting 10, 11, 12 Ks. Let's see where he's at on his pitch count, though. Uh, he's at 96 pitches. So technically, he could end up going one more inning, you know, if they wanted him to, but we'll see. I mean, 10 Ks sounds a hell of a lot better than nine, but we'll see. End of the seventh inning, 7-0 seven Mariners. We got JP finally to get his first hit. So he can go one for five. Let's see what we got here. So who are the players left that need a hit? Polanco and Hanniger are the only two players left that haven't got a hit all game. Polanco 0 for 3. Hanniger 0 for 4. And wouldn't you know it, next up for the Seattle Mariners, right fielder, everyone's favorite, Miach. Mitch Hanniger, let's go one for five. You can do it, baby. Batting second this inning, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Three for three, let's make it four for four, baby. And then batting third, two for four, first baseman, Ty France. Let's go, baby. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X as well as YouTube. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. It'll help us get more people in the room and it'll help us out with algorithm and statistics and metrics. So it definitely help us out. Like uh, we need three more people to get to 15. So if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, take one second and do it for me if you could. I'd greatly appreciate it. We just had someone do it. Thank you. We need two more people to smash the like button and we'll be at 15. And then depending if we get a few more people to come through, we might be able to get to 20. We got 42 people watching. Popped up for Hanniger. But like Hanniger is going to go 0 for 5, and you won't see that happen too often. Damn it, Mitch. It's all right. At least we're up 7-0. Next up, everyone's favorite dumper, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Can you go four for four? Find out, baby. Let's go. Let's go, Cal. Let's go, baby. Cal chops a foul, 1-1 one, one count. Yeah, you don't really see complete games uh, anymore, let alone, you know, perfect games. I mean, that's even more rare. But just to even see someone pitch, you know, all nine innings to go through like a one-hitter, two-hitter, it's very rare now. You know, it's like back when I was a kid, uh, you know, Nolan Ryan, you know, would end up going all nine innings. And there's a reason why he's at 5,000 Ks and that record will never be touched because the game has changed now. You know, he's got the most no-hitters, the most one-hitters, the most two-hitters, the most three-hitters, the most four-hitters. You know, and the guy was crazy. Now four for four, baby. There we go. There we go, Cal. Nice job, baby. Special plays, special teams, special players, baby. Nice job, Cal. Four for four tonight. Let's go. That'll get the batting average up. Cal's batting average went up all the way to 263 now. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's beat up on this bad team. Next up, first baseman, Ty Brand. Let's go, Ty. Thank <laughs> you. 
plus eight and a half. Well, I don't know. Colorado doesn't look like they're going to be able to put up anything. And uh, I'm not sure if the Mariners are going to end up scoring this inning or in the ninth. You know, I'm not sure if you're going to hit that bet or not. I mean, so you'd have to get two runs, either one more by the Mariners and at least one or two, you know, from the Rockies if the Mariners don't put up any more. So probably would be more likely for the Mariners to put up two more runs and be 9-0. But I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see on how this uh, last two innings kind of plays out. France? Oh, just foul. But obviously, both pitchers going into the game had bad records. Castillo was 0-4 with a 5.82 ERA, so that's why some people were betting, right? And then Dakota Hudson, right, was 0-3 with a 4.15 ERA, so that's why they made the line, you know, uh, 8.5, because they figured, okay, if both of these guys pitch the way that they've pitched in the last, you know, eight or nine starts for both that yeah, they should be able to get to nine runs or more combined, but that hasn't really necessarily been the case for the Rockies. But it has been for the Mariners. Mariners have been solid today. Double play. Got him. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth. But I'm not sure if that, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to get to nine runs total. If you are, you're going to have to get some kind of production out of the Rockies hitters this inning at least a run to get the momentum going. Next up for the Colorado Rockies, center fielder 0 for 2 with a K, Brenton Doyle. Now, if they were able to get Luis Castillo out of the game early on, then yeah, they maybe have been able to get some against our bullpen, but he's, you know, just been pitching in, you know, inning in, inning out. So, they have no luck with him tonight. Batting second, right fielder, one for one with a base on ball, Sean Bouchard. And batting third, 0 for 2, second baseman, Alan Trejo. And they only have two hits all game. So they got zero runs, two hits, three errors. And we have seven runs, 15 hits a season high, and no errors. So this is like the best game the Mariners have played all year. And it also helps when you're playing against a team that, uh, is one of the top, or I would say bottom three in Major League Baseball, bottom three, bottom four, with a four and 15 record, two and four at home. Uh, Cal Raleigh homered for the only home run so far, and that was in the top of the second. So only one home run, and that was by Cal Raleigh. And that started off the game uh, to make it 1-0 in the top of the second. And then everything else has just been RBIs. RBIs here, RBIs there. RBIs everywhere. Let's go. Joe Dirt approved. Tyson Miller is in, so uh, Castillo is finally out. So we will see now if they can actually rough up Tyson Miller. He's got a 2.25 ERA. We'll find out here. This is the opportunity to see if you can win your bet. If they can get to eight and a half, but they're going to have to get a run this inning and a run next inning, or try to get two runs in the eighth or two runs in the ninth. But, uh, you know, I would assume, well, we'll see who we end up having either Munoz or Stanek close out the game, or maybe it'll be Taylor Saciedo. I mean, they don't really need Munoz at this, you know, particular uh, game since we're up 7-0. But we'll see who they put in after Miller. 0 for 2 with a K. Doyle in the box, which is high, 2-1 count. See if Breton can get a hit here. Chop foul, 2-2 two -two count. Final stat line by Luis Castillo. Seven innings pitch, two hits, no earned runs, one walk, nine Ks. Got his ERA down to 4.40, and he's about to get his first win in 2024. That's my guy. Let's go.
Stopped up. Popped up. Out of play. Go, baby. Big swing and a miss. Got him. Sit down. Next up, one for one with a base on ball. Right fielder, Sean Huchar. Bottom of the eight, seven zero Seattle. Refreshing to see a blowout like this for us. We had a snow game here today. Big swing and a miss by Bouchard. One, two count. And uh, the snow has come down multiple times, two times in this matchup. Nothing stuck, but they did have a lot of snow this morning, but they got it all cleared out. Thank God. We already missed yesterday's game due to a rain out. That kind of pissed me off, but big swing and a miss. Got him. Miller is hot. Two batters and two Ks, baby. That's electric. Next up, second baseman, Alan Trejo. See if Alan can get on base or get something going for Colorado. Miller is hot, hot, hot for the Mariners. Nice job, Tyson. The former Brewer, the former Met. And the former Dodger. And the former Cub. And Royal. He's been everywhere. There we go. Good defense. Right to J.P. Crawford. Go to the top of the ninth. Nice to see Julio get back on track, baby. Four for five for Julio. Unbelievable. Four for four for Cal Raleigh. And that's how you end up getting to 7-0 when you have two players that are just crazy locked in. Let's go. All right, let's see who's due up here for the Mariners on their last at-bat here in the top of the ninth. Leading off, one for two with a run and two base on balls. DH for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Let's go, Miach. Batting second, two for four with two RBIs. Left fielder, Jonathan Classe. This is another reason why the Mariners are starting to turn the corner. You know, after Dominic Canzone ran into the wall and got hurt, we brought up Class A from AAA, and he has been that spark that we needed in the lineup and has re-energized everybody. Big facts. And batting third, third baseman, Josh Rojas. Let me take a look if Rojas is still leading the team in batting average. I believe he is. He's at 342. And let's take a look at batting averages now. JP Crawford, 173. Let's get that above 200. Julio's at 255 now after having a four for five day. Polanco, 174. Let's get that over 200. Hanniger with an 0 for four day, but he's still at 275. Looks like they're going to have Rally come in. He's at 161. Cal Raleigh, 263. And uh, Ty France, 288. Garver, 173. Class A 267 and Rojas is still number one at 342. Let's go. Let's go, Mitch. 
Top of the ninth, 7-0 Mariners. Pitch in the zone. Got him. Damn it. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. It'll help us out with analytics and metrics. We need two more people to smash the like button, and then we'll get to 15. So we try to get to 15 to 20 on every stream. We got 47 people in the room. Some of them are obviously watching on the Twitter slash X side. So they don't have the ability to like the stream unless they go to YouTube itself. So uh, we need one more person to smash the like button and we'll get to 15. And that'll be the, the goal. If we get more people on the YouTube side, then obviously we'll go for 20. Top of the ninth, 7-0 Mariners. One out, 0-2 count to Jorge. Or no, uh, Jonathan Colasse, excuse me. Let's go Jonathan. 47 people watching so far, appreciate y'all. Punched him out, got him. Garber, sit down. Jonathan Colasse, sit down. Two away, next up, third baseman, Josh Rojas. Let's go Josh. Go, Josh. Pitch outside. Come on, baby. Top of the night, seven zero, two outs, two one pitch. Two Rojas from Molina. Pitch on the corner outside. Three one count. Take the walk if needed. Go, baby. Cry dance up. Grounder towards first, routine play. Underhand throw, got him. All right, last opportunity for the Rockies. They need seven runs to tie it, eight to win it. Seven runs, 15 hits, no errors for the Mariners. Zero runs, two hits, three errors. That's crazy. They got more errors than hits today for the Rockies, but that's why you're a bottom four team in Major League Baseball. But we'll take it. We got to be able to beat up on the bad teams. Make up some ground in the in the win loss column. All right, last effort here for Colorado. Let's see if they can get at least a run. Leading off for the Rockies, DHing for them, Charlie Blackman. Best beard in baseball, baby. What's in there? Who knows? Batting second, 0 for 3 with 2K, shortstop, Ezekiel Tova. And batting third, 0 for 3 with 2Ks, third baseman, Ryan McMahon. No relation to Vince. Let's go, baby. Two more likes to hit the goal. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. The A's, yeah. I don't think anyone anticipated the Astros being last place at any point, you know, after, you know, how good they've been in the last four or five years right there with the Rangers for being like the best team, you know, in the American League or one of the better teams in the American League, even better, because you didn't really see Texas take off till last year, but Houston was kind of the top team and uh, 
you know, I assume they'll be able to rebound at some point in the season, but a little crazy to see how uh, bad that the Astros are struggling, especially if the A's and the Angels are doing better than them. All right, we're in the bottom of the ninth, 7-0, Mariners, 0-1 pitch. Oh, they got Cave in there, pinch hitting, instead of uh, the beard one, Charlie Blackman, the bearded one. Digga in the game. Pitches outside. One, two count. They're like, I'm not, we're not even going to use one of our top closers. We're up 7-0. So just like, don't fuck this up. And we got a double header tomorrow. But I think I'm just going to do the late stream, which will be at 5. But the first game is on at noon. Throw to first. Got him. There we go. One away. Cave grounded out to second. But George Kirby's pitching at the game at noon. And then Emerson Hancock is pitching at 5. But we'll do the game at 5. Probably be able to get a little bit more people in the room at that particular matchup. And then uh, it'll give me an opportunity to watch Talladega for the NASCAR Cup Series with Paisley Pup, uh, as well as the first game for the Mariners with George Kirby on the mound. Oh, there you go. There's a big hit for the Rockies. Ezekiel Tovar with a stand-up double. That gets the crowd going. Third hit of the game. Now they've tied how many errors they've had so far in this matchup. Three errors, three hits, no runs yet. Next up, third baseman Ryan McMahon. First extra base hit for the Rockies today. That's tough. All right, no worries. Yeah, if you can stop by, stop by. If you, if you have plans, no worries. I mean, I'm going to be watching the first game with George Kirby and the Mariners going against the Rockies. Dribbler towards third, two away. Runner advances to third now. Now they have a runner in scoring position. Really close at third base. And I'm definitely excited about Talladega. I ended up watching the Xfinity race. I had fun with that. Next up, catcher Elias Diaz. Whoa, pitches high and inside, almost hit him in the face. That knuckle curve, come on now. One-oh pitch. Oh, shit. It hit him. Two pitches close to the head. Come on. Get his ass out of there. I mean, why do we even have this pitcher in right now? This guy's terrible. Why are you even playing? I mean, anything that's going to be, you know, upper body. Shit. Almost ricocheted off his face. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll be live at 5 p.m. Pacific time for the second game in the Mariner doubleheader. So have a good rest of your day. Watch Stefan, watch Deadpool 1 and 2, and uh, rewatch Fallout. And I might end up rewatching it tonight as well. Have a great rest of your day. Now we got runners on the corners here.
You too. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Runners on the corners. We wanted to be able to shut them out. Duh -duh. Don't fuck this up, man. I hate when we bring in pitchers that are shitty like this. It's like you're letting them back in the game. I mean, we obviously have this game in control at 7-0, but why is this guy even in? Like, I don't want to win 7-1 or 7-2. I want to win 7-0. Could have had Castillo go an extra inning. Pitches outside, 2-1 count. But it shows you how important pitching really is in baseball. Like you could be in full control with your starter, and then once you go into your bullpen, I mean, it's a crapshoot. It may turn out well, it may not. 2-1 pitch. There we go, for a strike, 2-2 two -two count. All right, we're one strike away. Let's go. L.A. Hurtis Montero in the box. The good on the mound. Go Mariners. Diaz the second on a fielder's indifference. Jesus Christ. This guy's terrible. Bottom of the ninth, 7-0. Two outs, runners on the corners, which we haven't had a problem with until this guy came in. 3-2 pitch. This better be a fucking strike. End the game. Popped up. There we go. Luke Grayley. There we go. There we go. Hell yeah. Final score, Seattle Mariners 7 Colorado Rockies zero. And when we win, we dance, baby. Mariners win. Mariners win. Mariners win. Let's go. Hell yeah. Well, I appreciate everyone coming through on the Twitter slash X side as well as the YouTube side. 45 people in the room. I appreciate y'all. And uh, again, I'll watch Talladega and I'll watch the first matchup in the doubleheader with my pup. And then we will be streaming for the second game at 5 o'clock Pacific with Emerson Hancock. So I will be live for the second game in the doubleheader after I watch George Kirby hopefully end up getting a dub for us, as well as Talladega on the NASCAR Cup Series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to all the people that liked, sub, donated, commented, and shared. And I got one question for you. Who you know talks sports like us? Your boy, Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, and I'm out. Guys.